This is the decoding of the movie X-Men Apocalypse 2016 Part 2 by your boy Sammy Kundalini. Okay, so now after doing Part 1 of X-Men Apocalypse 2016, I had a lot of requests from people asking, when is Part 2 coming? When is Part 2? That's all I'm hearing is, when is Part 2 coming? And uh, it may take a little bit longer than anticipated. Right, so we're getting bombarded by people say they're waiting for the part two. So here it is, the part two. But however, with this part two, it's going to be slightly different from part one. Um, it may be a little bit more metaphysical. I'm not saying that part one wasn't metaphysical, but it may be a little bit more metaphysical and maybe a little bit technical in certain aspects. I will try my best not to go too technical. You know, because sometimes people say that I can be very technical sometimes, which I do know. But in some lectures when I'm over to technical, it's because I'm speaking to a particular crowd who understand, if you understand what I mean. But in this one, I try not to be too technical. Right. So now this is part two of X-Men Decoding. OK, so now in part one, as you know, we spoke about, we you know, the whole thing with the X-Men is to do with the mutants. And it's to do with the mutants is obviously to do with people with mutated genes. Mut with their genes are being mutated. Okay? And we talk about how that first came about. It was in the scriptures. When we talk about Adam and Eve and the picking of the fruit of the tree. Now, we talked about the search of immortality in part one. It was picking of the tree's immortality. And what happens is this. You see, you have a range of people. Christians will tell you that. God said, do not pick the fruit of the tree. If you eat it, you will die. But it was a spiritual death, according to Christians. However, nowhere in the scriptures does it say anything about a spiritual death. And when you think about it, right, if nobody was supposed to die before the eating of the fruits of the tree, then this world would be overpopulated. There's no way on earth everybody would fit into this world. It would be overpopulated. We wouldn't be having the discussion now. So people have to have a lifespan in order for other people to come and experience the earth. Because if there's 7 million people or 7 billion people on the earth right now, whatever it is, right, that's now. And another 100 years, are going to be another 7 billion people because people born in all the time. It's just impossible. It wouldn't work. So that makes absolutely no sense, right? So we're going to explore all those ideas and see what it's all about. So now, the pe Adam and Eve... Picking the fruit of the tree leads to a certain amount of genes. We're called the mutated genes. What made these people special, right? These people special. So in the Quran, the question is asked, right? The question is asked to Adam and Eve in the Quran. Are you going to pick off the tree of immortality? Tree of immortality. Immortality means that by partaking of this fruit, you have immortal cells. Your cells will be different from any other people. All right? So where does this start? It starts off by, in the beginning, it talks about after picking it. Okay, let's, let's go into the whole Adam and Eve story and see where this picking of the fruit of the tree stands from. You see, when you go to Adam and Eve, there's a question where God is speaking to Adam and Eve. All right? And it says that in all, a paraphrasing, for all the trees in the garden, you can partake of the tree, but the one in the middle do not pick off that tree because the day that you do that, you will surely die. All right? That was said to Adam and Eve. So Adam and Eve did not pick off this tree in the Garden of Eden. So somewhere along the line, the serpent comes and the serpent comes to Eve. And the serpent says to Eve, eat of the tree, power phrasing. And Eve replied by, no, we cannot eat of this tree because God told us that if we treat of this tree, we are going to die. The serpent then turns around and says to Eve, you are not going to die if you eat of the tree. Because I'm paraphrasing, because God knows that if you eat of these trees, your eyes will be open and you'll be one of God's. Right? It's paraphrasing. So anyway, somewhere along the line, the serpent got Eve to pick off the tree. Now, when they ate of the tree, Eve picked the apple of the tree. And then when she ate it, she passed it on to Adam. So they both ate of the tree, so-called forbidden fruits. And when they did that, their eyes was open and they realized they were naked. So they cut fig trees and they covered their nakedness. So now that when God now comes into the garden, 
God is calling Adam and Eve, asking, where are you? So they were hiding. So he asked, why are you hiding? Have you eaten of the tree what was forbidden? And from there, that was the punishment for all mankind. So because Adam and Eve picked a fruit of the tree, according to the Bible, everybody in the whole world have to pay for their sins, for their crime. Where is this story coming from? Now let's look at this story now and see where this story is coming from. And let's examine it and put it in its proper context now. Now, when you look at it now, God said to Adam and Eve, if you eat of this tree, you will die. The serpent said, if you eat of this tree, you will not die. Your eyes will be open and you'll be as gods. Now, when you analyze the whole thing, you have to ask the question, who was telling the lies and who was telling the truth? Because everything that the serpent said came to pass. They didn't die and their eyes was open, which is the reason why after taking the fruit, God turns around and said to the rest of the Elohim, the angel, now the man has become one of us. One of what? Become a God. Become a God. So in Psalms now, it is written in there that the Hebrew race is God. And then when Jesus or Yahweh Shai was speaking to the Jewish race, he asked, not written in your Torah, which means laws, that you are gods. Right? So by eating of these three, they become gods. And by becoming gods, you become eternal. Right? You become eternal. Like Melchizedek. Melchizedek is eternal because he has no beginning of days and no end of life. So he's everlasting. He's Alpha and Omega. So it there seems that the serpent was punished for telling the truth. Right? Okay. So what is the story about the serpent giving Eve the fruit to eat and Eve passing on to Adam and the serpent being punished for that? What is that story? You see, what it is, that story, you can get that from ancient Kemet. They're getting that from the wars of Egypt, from the wars of the pyramid of ancient Kemet. You see, when you go back to, to Greek mythology, all right, Greek mythology. But all right, before we come to that, let's look at the, the let's, let's stick to, the, the, to what the serpent did. The serpent gave Eve the apple. They claim there's no apple, as we know, metaphorically speaking, give the fruit. And the fruit Eve gave to Adam, they both partake of the fruit and their eyes was open and they became wise and they became like God. So because of that, the serpent was punished, according to the Bible, right, was punished. But when we look at the serpent, the serpent is a snake and it's an allegory. There was no speaking of Adam and Eve or Eve having a conversation with a serpent. People and snake do not have conversation. That is totally pathetic. It's an allegory. How does a snake move? The snake moves in spirals. Spirals. How does energy move? All energy moves in spiral. Right? Whether it's zigzag or whatever, they move in spiral. It is an energy. And what was the serpent? The serpent was Lucifer. Who was Lucifer? Lucifer is the light bearer. A light bearer is somebody who brings a light onto someone who gives them truth. Hence the expression when you see a drawing. And you see, like someone like Albert Einstein, hypothetically, or anybody who they claim is intelligent, where they have a great idea, they have a light bulb in the middle of their head to say their light gone off just because they've seen the light. That is what the serpent was, the light bearer, Lucifer. One who brings light to you is one who brings knowledge. So it's called Lucifer, like blue cipher. Blue cipher, like to decipher something is to decode something. To decode something is to break something down. So Lucifer was the snake. And in ancient time, the symbol of the snake represented wisdom. Wisdom and knowledge. It's only when Christianity take over, they change all these symbols into a negative connotation. So they made the snake evil. The devil's tail was evil. But all these symbols had a positive connotation. You see, in Egypt, the snake is not seen as, as evil. Nor is it in, 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 in India which is in this Kush. That happens when the Catholic took over the Bible and so forth, and Christianity came in after they changed the whole thing. So what it is, the angel, the snake represents knowledge. It represents spiral. It represents energy. So Eve got the energy. And but what did the serpent did? The serpent gave knowledge and to mankind. And because of that, he was punishing the Bible. Now, when you go back to Greek mythology, 
it was on, uh, was it Poseidon or Gadim? Oh, you'll come to me in a minute. Possibly Gadimi. Gadimi stole the lights from the gods and gave it unto mankind. So because Gadimi did that, Gadimi was punished by the gods. Because the gods did not want the mankind and the gods to be on an evil and an even rather level playing. The gods wanted to have more knowledge than man and keep man subjected underneath them. So because Gadami, right, took the light from the god and gave it to the men and turned the men now into gods, he was punished. Where's this story coming from? You see, when you go to the wars of ancient Kemet, you have a high female there called Sashet. Sashet. Sashet now, when you go to the wars of Kemet, there is a tree. In order for any pharaoh or any king to sit down and rule Kemet, they have to go through a certain initiation process. Sashet will pick that fruit, that light off the tree, right, off the tree, and she will pass it onto the pharaoh. And when the pharaoh took part in that picking of the tree, the fruit of the tree, he will get wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, making him God on earth, right? Making him the highest on earth. But in order to do that, Sashet has to pass the fruit onto the pharaoh. Which is the reason why when you go back to the Bible, it is Eve, the female, that passes the fruit unto Adam. You see that? So this is where the story is coming from. But by the time it gets to the Bible, it becomes corrupted. Why? Now, when you go into the films, I'm coming to X-Men in a minute. When you go into the film or the Bible or even the Quran, it asks, are you going to participate in the tree? Are you going to eat of the tree of immortality? That tree is the same tree what was in the Garden of Genesis. It is the same tree on the walls of ancient Kemet. It is the same tree right, in the books of Revelation, chapter 22, when it talks about the tree of life. It is the same tree that you find in the Kabbalah, what was passed down to us by our Asian African ancestors, the Kabbalah. That's what the tree was. Now, what is this tree? What is this tree? You see, when you go back to the Kabbalah, they're talking to the tree, goes into something called the tree of life. Now, when you're looking at the Kabbalah, it gives you the, 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 the whole dimension of the universe. It gives you the dimension. It gives you the planets. It gives you astrology. And then when you draw a line around this tree, right, you realize it forms a human body. It's a human body. So the tree now becomes a human body. So that's why when you go into Genesis or through the Bible, it talks about the man tree. But you wouldn't understand what he's talking about unless you understand certain things. The man tree, the man in the tree. And the Kabbalah, the tree of life, is a tree and it's also a human anatomy. That's what it is. Now, when you go into the Kabbalah, right, you have 22, you, you have 10 spears, 10 emanating light spears, and you have 22 paths. Those 22 paths in the body are the 22 amino acids in your DNA. In your DNA, you have 22 amino acids, which is why you have 22 paths on the Kabbalah, in, right? Which is also related to the 22 Hebrew letters of the alphabet, right? You have 22. So these are the 22 amino acids. So you have 22 paths and you have 10 emanating spheres. 22 at 10 is 32. Now, on the tree of life, you have 10 emanating spears, and you have a spear which is behind the tree called the daf. This is not light. When you go through the daf now, you go through the opposite side of the tree. So now you have the tree of life, but now this takes you to something called the tree of death. The tree of death is just metaphorically speaking. It's just the opposite. So everything on the tree of life is on the tree of death or the tree of opposite. So now you have 32 paths, right? 22 paths on the tree of life and 10 spears, that's 32. On the tree of death, you have the same 32. When you put them together, you get 64. This 64 is something called the 64 codons in your DNA, as we spoke about already. You have 64 codons in your DNA. Now, in that 64 codon, only 22 is activated. The rest of them, they call it junk DNA, right? Junk DNA, so things like the periphery gland, the pineal gland, and all these other things, they will call it junk DNA because they said it has no use. What does ignorant people talking? We know that everything in your body has a use. We're not stupid. The Most High didn't put things in our body for no reason. 
So one time the tonsils would be considered one of that, right? So this is the 64. So you have 64 codons in your DNA, what we talked about in part one. And uh, when you go past 22, once the, the rest of them is, is turned off, 22 is turned on. When you go to 23 and above, that gives you extra power and that heightens your genes. That's X-Men, right? So the X-Men had a powerful genes. It's coming from the tree of life. Now we come back to the tree of life in a minute. So what is this genes? What is X-Men? X-Men are superheroes, right? And the word heroes is coming from Horus, which is coming from Heru. So Heru become heroes. So you put an S on heroes, you get heroes, right? So these were heroes. They were Heru, if you, if you want to call it like that, right? Just like Heru. So now these mutants had superpowers. Why did they have superpowers? As we know already, because of the X-Men, you had the X chromosome, the X genes that had so certain amount of chromosome, which was the codons, was extra turned on in their DNA. So they became special people, right? That's why when you go into the Bible, although it's all mixed up, it talks about two seeds shall come out of, it, out of this earth. It says the woman seed and the serpent seed. And within these two seeds, there shall have enmity between them. Enmity means hostility. There'll be enemies between two sets of seeds, right? So you have the two set of seeds. One seed will be from the God seed and one from a particular mankind who wants to get rid of the God seed. And then when you go further up, right, it talks about Jacob having two children, right? Or, 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 or yeah, Jacob having two children, or, or, or Isaac rather, which is Jacob, right? And Esau. And then it talks about two nations is in the womb. And after these two nations, these two seeds, there'll be hostility between the two nations. Let's carry on. One nation is the nation of Israel, which is the Bible talks about. And the other nation is the rest of mankind. So the nation of Israel is the special chosen people. This is what X-Men are dealing with. This is a, so when you go through the Old Testament, you see that Israel is down trodden under. They've been through so much slavery, right? They've been put in slavery and, and they were being down trodden by all the other nations. So Israel is the one who has to suffer. This is why the mutants now, when you go back to the X-Men, the mutants was always being hunted down by the people who rule this planet, right? Hunted down by the people who rule this planet. That is symbology of the Israelites. That's what it is. It's symbolic of it. It's all simple. So now, the person who created the X-Men movie, not talking about Stan Lee, in the movie, I can't remember his name, but when the first X-Men came out, he admitted, because in the X-Men, you have two characters. You have Charles Xavier, and you had Magneto. Magneto, right, was a good guy, as they would put it, but then he got fed up of mankind because mankind killed his wife and children, and he wanted to get rid of mankind. He was fed up of all this hiding and running. He wanted to get rid of mankind. Charles Xavier didn't want to do that. He wanted to go through the peaceful way. So no, if we can reason with them, etc., and have peace on earth. Right? Magneto got fed up of that. He just wanted to get rid of them and wipe them out. So because of that, there was a split between Charles and Xavier and Magneto. So Magneto left the X-Men. So these are special people. Now, going back to the person who made the film, the first X-Men, he admitted that Charles Xavier, right, and, and, and Magneto. Magneto was based off the character of Malcolm X, while Charles Xavier was based off the, the, the character of Martin Luther King. So in every way, this is based off Nubian people, right? It's based on the experience of Nubian people and so forth. So now... When you go on this, they said the Israelites was a special race. Now, when you go to Hitler now, right, just building a foundation for X-Men. When you go to Hitler, Hitler was a Jew, right? So Hitler, as far as he's concerned, he is part of that special race, that race where there's superhumans and so forth. Until he'd find out somewhere along the line that he was not a Jew. He found out he was not a Jew. So when he found that now, he warned the other, other people, Jewish people, and said, you're following a, you know, he said, you're not the original Jews. Because he found that he wasn't the original Jews. 
He said, you're following a Scotia religion. The word Scotia in Germany means black. So he said, you're following a black religion. So because he realized he wasn't a Jew, he got upset. So what did he do? He said, okay, then. He knew that the Jews were the chosen people and the special people. So he said, if I can't be a Jew, then I'm going to create my own race. What did he call them? He called them the Superman, right? The blonde hair, blue eyed beings called them the Superman, which he went into certain metaphysics and he got certain people deal with occultism and they came together and said he's going to create a super race called the Superman. What is the Superman? Superman is a hero. So he's going to create his own hero, right? So are we getting this? Okay, so that's where all this come along. So the X-Men is nothing different from the rest of mankind, what you call the Gentiles, and the Israelites. And there's a fight between the two seeds, the serpent seed, as the Bible would say, and the woman seed, right? Or Jacob and Esau. There's a fight. That's what the whole thing's based on. Now, when you're going back to eating off the tree of immortality, right? That gives you eternally, eternal life. That Henrietta Lacks herself was eternal. Okay? Eternal. That's why in the X-Men you have a character in there called Wolverine. What's special about Wolverine? The special thing about Wolverine is that he cannot die. Why can't he die? Because they said he made a pact somewhere along the line with the devil. And because of that, he cannot die. Well, that is going right back to the beginning of Genesis. Right? Beginning of Genesis. When the serpent, right, gave knowledge unto Eve. And by participating of this fruit, they become immortalized. Right? Immortalized. That's what this whole thing is. It's all, you see, it, 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 it's, it's right in front of your eyes. Right? But it's done very subtly. So you have to see it and decode it for what it is. So Wolverine became immortal, all right? And in order for all this to happen, you have to have that special genes, that codon, that 64 codon in your body, or that path in the Kabbalah, right? You have to have certain amount of codon turned on, what could turn you into somebody like Henrietta Lacks, the mitochondria Eve, right? That's what you have to be. So now... So now, how is this done? You see, we have gone back to Genesis. And when you look at the word Genesis, you have the word G-E-N-E, -E, which is obviously genes, and then you got Isis. So it's the genes of Isis. So the special people are the people from the very beginning who have the genes of Isis, the female. That Isis is no different from saying Sachet. Because Sachet is the one who passed the fruit on to the man. The man cannot get the special powers by sitting on the throne in Egypt without it being passed on by the female goddess called Sachet, right? So Sachet is the one who passed them on and it encodes them, gives them power and it encodes, takes off of their whole body. That fruit, what they eat, lights up their body. It intertwines with their DNA, RNA, and it gives them certain power, all right? So this is what this is all about, certain power. So it's the genes of Isis. Genesis, from the beginning. But what is Genesis? You see, Genesis is an English word. When you go back to Hebrew, the word is not Genesis, it's called bara Shef. bara Shef. What is bara Shef? Well, when you decode it, bara in Hebrew means created, while Shef means six. So bara Shef means created six. So when you go back to the Bible, Genesis means created six which is the reason why Adam and Eve was created on the sixth day. Heaven and earth was completed on the sixth day. And the whole process of mankind to last so-called 6,000 years, when you eliminate the two six or the three six, because it has no value, 6,000 comes back to six. You see that? So that is six, six, six. All right? Six. That is created six. And if you want a more further, further to explore into this created six, then I suggest that you tap into YouTube and tap in Sister Mamiesi and Sami Kundalini, and the title is called The Times of Aquarius, at the Times of Aquarius and the Number Six. The Number Six and the Times of Aquarius. And we go a little bit more deeper into this number six. So Genesis, which is Barashis, is created six. What is that created six? 
Now, for a split second, let's move over to the movie called Black Adam. Black Adam. What was Black Adam? Black Adam, right? Black Adam was a boy in Kemet. Just like the, the X-Men Apocalypse. It was based in Kemet. It was in Kemet, right? So now, what was he? He, he was, they, they were like slaves in there to certain people. Slaves. And then he came across, a man came across an artifact. And somehow he came to this little boy. And they wanted to kill the little boy for these artifacts. But it didn't quite happen. Because the gods intervened. Who intervened? Six gods intervened. Six gods. Six gods intervened. All right? So now Genesis means created six. So anyway, back to the boy. The boy was a slave who broke away from the slavery, right? And as they were about to gig to kill the little boy, right? The gods intervened. There were six gods. Six gods. Who were these gods? The gods were Shu. They gave him the power of Shu, Heru, Amon, Zahuti, who is Tahuti, Amon, and Meked. So they gave, they invoked into his spirit the stamina of Shu, the swiftness of Heru, which is Horus, the strength of Amon, the wisdom of Zehuti, who is Tahuti, the power of Amon, of, 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 of Amen, and the courage of Meken. Okay? So you had the, 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 the power of Aten and the courage of Meken. These were the six. These was the six gods was created into this boy to be the superhero, to have this power. But in case you missed it, just in case you missed it, you may not have missed it, but in case you missed it, when you take the names of the six gods and you take the first letter, you get Shu, Heru, Amon, Zehuti, Amon, and Meken. Right? When you take the first six letters, you get S-H-A-Z-A-M, which is Shazam, which is what Black Adam is. He's Shazam. So that was the created six. The created six is the Genesis. The Genesis is the genes of Isis. So he got this power, although they didn't show, they didn't show Sashet in this movie, but it was the power of Shashet who was created through the six gods. What you have to get this power from coming from Shashet. So that's what it was basically. All right? That's what it was. Hidden code, hidden symbolism. Right? But you see, what is interesting is this. Is that when Shazam was created, he has a lightning on his chest. When you go back to X-Men, you have a character in there called Quicksilver. Who has a lightning on his chest. When you go back to Flash... You have a superhero called Flash who moves fast, who has a lightning on his chest. What is all this lightning? You have Black Lightning who has a lightning. What is the symbology of all this lightning? Well, you see, that goes back into what we were talking about, Kabbalism. And Kabbalism is the tree. Now, when you look at the tree of life in Kabbalah, when you take away all the spears, right, and you take away all the paths, you're left with a flash in the middle. A flash. It is a flash of lightning. Right? That is where it's called the flash in the Kabbalah. It's literally called the flash. This is where you're getting your flash Gordon from. This is where you're getting your quicksilver of the X-Men from. This is where you're getting your Shazam, your black lightning. Why? Because they all move fast. When you go back to the X-Men Apocalypse 216, Quicksilver, he moves fast like lightning. And it's coming from that tree. Now, it's got, can that be encoded anywhere in the human race? Well, let's look at it. Usain Bolt. Bolt. When you look at Usain Bolt, Usain Bolt is the fastest man on the planet. In the 100 meter race, what was his time? It was 9.58. It could have been faster, but he slowed down deliberately near the end when he was showboating, right? Not realizing that he was going to break the world record. But you see, that had to be done. But see, what is this telling you? What has this got to do with the flash and the Kabbalah? In the Kabbalah, you have 22 paths. What takes you from heaven, Kitur, and to your feet, which is Malkuf. The light comes from heaven and comes to your feet, right? Which is Malkuf. And that covers through the 22 paths in the human anatomy. That is Kabbalah. Now, going back to Usain Bolt, his name is Usain and his name is Bolt. What is bolt? Bolt is lightning. You have a lightning bolt. That is the same lightning what you see in the Kabbalah, what you call the flash. It is the same lightning when you go to the tarot and the 16 cards of the tarot, you see a lightning hitting a building. 
the burning tarot, which symbolizes changes. So when the lightning hit this building, it is changes. What is this building? This building is a temple. What does the Bible say? Your body is a temple. So there was a change from this lightning. The light hits your temple, it encodes in your DNA and your gene, and it changes you into superhuman, right? Going back to the Kabbalah, which is a body, you have this lightning. So what is this lightning? It goes from your head to your feet. It's called the flesh. Lightning means fast. Your fast as lightning. That's why in Quicksilver, this lightning on them, all these heroes, they move fast. So what has this got to do with Usain Bolt? Usain Bolt is the fastest man on the planet. Right? His name is Bolt. A Bolt comes from lightning. But what was his record? In the 100 meters, his record was 9.58 seconds. 9, right? Plus 5, plus 8 equals 22. This 22 is the flash what goes through the 22 paths in the Kabbalah. You see that? And then when you go to the 200 meters, he broke the record again. What was the time? It was 19.19 seconds. So what do you do with that? You get the 200 meters. So you have 200 meters and 19.19. So when you eliminate the zero from the 200 meters, you get two, right? You get 19 and then you get, you get two, one, nine one and nine that adds up to 22 so when he did the 100 meters it added up to 22 and when he brought the 200 meters it added up to 22 and that 22 is symbolic of the flash the lightning in the kabbalah right and this light activates the genes you see you saying Bolt probably don't know about this i doubt very much he knows about this but this was all kabbalistic and what is this genes? This genes is special genes was attributed to certain people. What is this genes? It... All right. Special genes was attributed to certain people. What is the name of this genes? You have over 20,000 genes in your body was not activated. Right? And it takes the, the codons in your genes to activate these genes. This gene is called ACTN3. ACTN3. And it's found in a few people what has this genes. It's a minority. These genes are found usually in people in West Africa when they do find it. Or people who is descendants of people from West Africa. The scientists know this. The scientists already confirmed it. When they wanted to know why certain people run fast, right, in athletics, why certain races are faster than other races, they realized that they had the genes what other people didn't have. And they traced it back to West Africa and the people who descended of West Africa. ACTN3 is the name of the genes. This Quicksilver in the X-Men had these genes. That's why he moved fast. Shazam in Black Adam have these genes. That's why he did things fast. In Black Lightning, the black man had these genes. That's why he moves fast. In Flash Gordon, you had these genes. That's why he moved fast. Because they had the flash on them. The flash is lightning, fast as lightning, a lightning bolt. And then you send bolt, and his record adds up to 22. And that 22 in the Kabbalah is a signal of the flash, which is that light, which is inside the human body. And then Sachet takes the, the fruit of the tree, gives it to the fear of which lights up their body and lights up their genes, right? Genes. It's all encoded. So you see, it's all based on you. So now with, with, with Charles and Xavier, the character being based off Martin Luther King, and then you have Magneto based off Malcolm X. That's why in the first movie, at the end of the first movie in the X-Men, Magneto wanted to destroy this world by any means necessary. He used Malcolm X words. Just like the person who created the film admitted it was based off that character. Why? Because it's all based on you. All based on you. It is that flash. So we talked about the 16 card of the tarot. It is a flash of lightning hitting the tower. What is that tower? That tower is the pillow. When you go to the Kabbalah, that flash of lightning hits the middle pillow, right? Which is a tower. It hits the middle pillow. That middle pillow is your DNA. It's the DNA within you, right? It's your DNA. 
That is it. That's why when you go back to the film X-Men Apocalypse 2016, the allegory, when we talk about the helical rising of Sirius, a light moving down from heaven, light coming down from heaven and coming down to earth, hitting the pyramids. And when it hits the pyramid, the pyramid open up and it forms the X. Right? When you go back to the 16th card of the tarot, the light is coming from heaven and it hits the temple. When you go to the Kabbalah, the light is coming from something called Kitur, a spear called Kitur, which is symbolic of heaven, and it hits Malkuth, which is symbolic of earth. So the light comes from heaven and hits the earth. That's why when you go back to the film, the light comes from heaven, the helical rising of Sirius, light comes down and it hits the pyramid, the pyramid open up and it forms the X. What is this got to do with anything? This is light on your code, on your DNA. It's the whole symbology of Jesus on the cross. Who they call Jesus, Yahweh Shai, putting on the cross. What is Yahweh Shai? Yahweh Shai is symbolic of the light. I am the light of this world. And the cross is an X when you stand it on one side. So it is light on your genes, on your DNA. Like the light, what slides up your body, what sachet gives the fruit onto the pharaoh. So let's look at this now. Within the human anatomy, right, around your cells, scientists know that, around your cells there is white light. There is a white light, right? A white light. Now, when you put it under the microscope, you see this white light. But if the cell has cancer, the light becomes dim. Right? And when your cells is sick, it becomes dim. When it becomes healthy, the light glows. But you'll only see this under a microscope. There's a name for it. It's called biophoton. And physicists like Pop Frizz made certain reference to all this. Right? A famous physicist, Pop Frizz, he knows about that. And there's a lot of extensive work talked about this. This is the light on your DNA. That's why when you go back to the Kabbalah, you have the 22 paths, which is symbolic Right? Of the 22 amino acid in your body, right? And then you have the 10 spears, which is light. The spears are on the paths, on the DNA. This is the same light which is in your body. But the Kabbalah already knew this thousands of years ago before physicists understand, just now are starting to understand. You see? So that light is the light on your genes. So Jesus is the light. You put him on the cross, and the cross is the chromosome. Now, what is a cube? A cube is something what is used to entrap people, right? To entrap people. You look at the cube, that's trap. So now, if you put four cubes on top of each other, and you put one to the left and one to the right, or you could put four squares, because a square is just the face of a cube, on top of each other, and one to the left and one to the right, it has six cube, six, six squares. When you fold them over, it folds over into a cube. So now, four tubes on top of each other, and one at the top to the left, and one to the right forms a cross, right? When you fold it over, it falls over into a cube. When the cube is opened up, it opens up into a cross. So now, when it said, Yahweh Shai on the cross, is to open up the crew, to free you. Free your genes, right? Free you. So that's what this is all about. But this is also the X. So now, in part one, we talked about when you want to, all right, if you want to vote then, when time comes to vote, what do you do? You get a piece of paper and there's a box. A box is the face of a cube. There's a box and you put an X in there and you put your signature. But how do you spell signature? S-I-G-N and then nature. When you break it down into two syllables, signature is sign nature. So anytime you sign something, you're signing away your nature. When you put that X in that box, you're putting your, your, your chromosome in that cube so your cube can be, can be trapped because the cube is used as entrapment. So you're trapping your cube by giving it away unto someone else, giving someone else your power so they could have your power and taking the power away from yourself, which is in your genes. So that is the X in the box, like Jack in the box. Jack was trapped in a box. What is Jack in a box? Jack is the box. Jack is coming from Jacob. Jacob is coming from Jacob because there's no J in Hebrew. It was called Jacob in Hebrew. And then Jack is a box. And Jack is short for Jacob. 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 
Jacob is Jacob. So Jack in the box is Jacob. And Jacob became Israel. So when you put Jack in the box, you're putting Israel in the box. So when you sign over your nature by giving your signature and you put an X in this cube, you see, you see where the whole thing is going? These are done subtly. So what is it now? The snakes. The snake is symbolic of the Kundalini energy, right? It's symbolic of the energy. And then you have uh, your DNA, which is a twisted ladder, right? Made out of amino acid and is joined together by hydrogen joint bonds. It's made out of sugar phosphate. So you have the snake, which is a spiral because your DNA spirals, and you have your DNA, which is a twisted ladder, okay? Now we have a game called snakes and ladders. Snakes and ladders. What is snakes and ladders? There's a symbology behind it. You see, there is 100 squares on snakes and ladders, and each square is tilted to 360 degrees because there's four corners and four angles of a square, and it's 490 degrees angle when you add it as a 360 degree. Now, when you go back into the film X-Men Decoded, X-Men Apocalypse 216, all right, the year comes up 3,600. Well, guess what? If there's 100 squares on the snakes and ladders, when, and each square adds up to 360 degree, then 360 degrees times 100 equal 3,600. To do with the genes, the snakes, the ladder, which is the double helix. You see, it's all encoded. It's all there. I see it clearly because I have a spirit guy who teach me. We're going to that the next time, all right? It's all encoded in your DNA, but if you blink, you will miss it. That's why they gave the number 3,600, among other reasons. It's to do with the X, X-Men, the X, right? The snakes and the ladder, the ladder being your DNA, the snake being the Kundalini, the energy, right? It's all there in cold, but it's done so subtly, if you blink, you'll miss it. It's all in your genes. It's all in your genes, right? Which is the reason why Sasha, being a female, passed that on to the male to get the power. What is that? That is the mitochondria DNA. The mitochondria. Any scientist or any biologist or anybody will tell you the female is the one who has the mitochondria, not the, not the man. If you have no mitochondria in your body, you're dead. You can't live. It is mother. The mother passes it on to daughter or mother passes it on to son. Right? It, mitochondria comes from the female. And the female passes it on to the children, what gives them life when they're born. Life, tree of life. Like sachet passing off the fruit of the tree of life unto the pharaohs who give them light. These are sacred knowledge which is not taught to you. You don't see these things in books. You don't see these things. But it's the reason why I've come as a decoder to decode these things. So that I could show things that were not readily seen. To try to come on a different level. That's why I talk things different from most people. Right? So things that I talk is a bit different from most people. I don't try and talk this usual things that people talk. I try to come with something different. What was taught to me by my spirit guide. Right? And to give it on to people to share. So you do what you want to do with it. You either believe or don't believe. It's up to you. You have free will. All I can do is pass on the knowledge. People's not going to believe everything they hear. Because that's human being. No problem. Right? So take what you want to take and leave what you want to leave. That's all I'm doing. So now, uh, X-Men Apocalypse, 2016. Now, when you look at the, all these X-Men movies, there's about nine or ten of them. Why is X-Men Apocalypse called two? Why do they have the date 216 there? You see, they didn't put any date on all the other X-Men movies. Why this particular one? See, there's a reason. Things are done for a reason. They don't break it down for you. That's done for you to have to be able to understand symbolism and having the ability to decode something. I'll tell you why they have 2016. Because when you have 2016, right, 2016, the zero has no value. So it becomes 216. What is 216? 216 is the name of God. How does that work? Well, when you go into Genesis, or sorry, or Exodus rather, in the Bible, Exodus chapter 19, 20, and 21, when you read it in the original Hebrews, you have three columns there. 
And that three columns, in that three columns, 18, 19, and chapter 21, each column has 72 verses in there. And when you times that 72 by three, you add up to 216. This is the hidden name of God. You see, in Hebrew, God has 72 names and 216 letters, which is the 216, all right? 216 letters, and it adds up to the name, Shaham Varosh. So a Hebrew rabbi will know exactly what I'm talking about. A Hebrew rabbi, Shaham Varosh. The 216 letter, hidden letter name of God. Now, what is this 216? You see, we have symbolism. And each symbolism has its own story. So in astrology, you have the moon, amongst other things. What is the moon symbolic of? The moon is symbolic of the subconscious, and the moon is related to the mother, right? Which is related to the mother. And that is the subconscious, back to the womb again, right? The genes, which is the reason why in X-Men you have a character in there, what they call genes. What was so powerful, she was about to blow up everything. Right? That comes back to the woman, genes. And that genes is genes of Isis or the genes within you. That's why they call the woman gene. Okay? So now 216. What has that got to do with the moon? The moon is symbolic of the subconscious. The subconscious means that you know everything. In, in consciously, you don't. But subconsciously, you do. So what's that got to do with the moon? Well, what is the surface of the moon? The diameter of the moon is 2016, right? 2016 is the diameter of the moon. Goes back to God again, all right? God. Now, let's get into the ages. You have something called the position of the equinox. When you get all these ages, the ages of Aries, the ages of Pisces, the Aries of Aquarius, What's symbolic of all of these? You see, each ages lasts for 2,160 years. So when you're coming out to the age of Pisces, Pisces start for 2,160 years. Going into the age of Aquarius is 2,160. When you drop the zero, you get 216. When you times that by 12, you get 25,900, which is a solar year, when you go through the whole constellation. So each constellation has an age. It talks about the 400 years in the Bible. After the 400 years, you're going to be buried in a golden age. This is the age of Aquarius, which is 2,160. When we make that golden age, we drop the zero of 2,160, you get 216. That is the name of God. God is 216. Now, let's look at this now. We talk about immortal. Immortal is something that lives forever. You have a circle. You have Melchizedek, having no beginning of days and no end of life. He is eternal. Only the circle is eternal. The square has a starting point. The triangle has a start, starting point. Square, right? And the rectangle have four starting points. There is no starting point on the circle. But what is a circle? A circle adds up to 360 degrees. That is Melchizedek, right? So now God is eternal. But then what happens now? In the books of, remember we talked about your cells. Within your cells, right, you have the melanin. The melanin. Melanin is six electron, six proton, and six neutron makes up the carbon melanin in the Nubian. 666. That is the real reason. It's been, the 666 has been perverted and turned into something else where it's not to put you off track. 666 stands for melanin. Carbon, right? 666. Bear that in mind in a minute. Now, remember, God is 216. Now, the scripture, what all the superheroes things that these films are based off, right? The scripture talks about the marriage between the lamb and the bride. The lamb and the bride. And if you understand how to decode the Bible, you will know anytime it talks about the woman in the Bible, it's talking about the nation of Israel. Jewish rabbi knows that. You know, you know, if you understand how to decode things, you will know that. So the lamb, which is symbolic of God, right, and the bride is going to come back together to make a union, right? Come back to make a union, right? Right? So just bear that in mind. I'm going to come to that in a second. But in the Bible, it talks about the crystal city, the return of the new Jerusalem. 
the new Jerusalem. And then when it talks about the new Jerusalem, it gives you a measuring read. So it gives you four corners, right? Four corners. So it's four corners, and they're both of, uh, all of equal size. And then there's one on the top and one on the bottom. When you put that all together, that is a cube. That is a cube. But what is your melanin made of? You see, the tyrosine in your body is the precursor to the melanin. The, paras the, the tyrosine is little hexagon. They're little cubes. They're cubes. Your melanin is made out of little cubes, the melanin structures. Little cubes, the tyrosine, right? So that's the cube. But however, they talk about a crystal city. And that crystal city is nothing but a cube. It's a cubit. There's six sides to it and they're all equal. If you have six sides to something and you have a top and a bottom, that's a cube, right? That's a cube. So what is this cube? When it talks about the measuring, a read to measure it, the crystal city added up to 144,000 feet. 144,000 feet, right? Do you know what 144,000 feet is? 144,000 cubits, rather. 144,000 cubit is 216 feet. 216 feet. That's all it is. 144 equals 216 in cubits. So when it tell you that, it was symbolically telling you that the crystal city adds up to 216. Now, what is 216? Now, let's go back to our melanin, which is six electron, six proton, and six neutron. Six, six, six. What do you do with that six? You take one six, you put a chromosome next to it, the X chromosome. The woman have the double X chromosome, and the man have the X and the Y. So you have six, and you have a chromosome. You have another six, you have another chromosome, and then you have a six, and you have an equal sign. If you write that on the paper, you'll see six times six times six. What is six times six times six? Six times six times six, 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 six. Right, six, 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 six times six times six equal two hundred and sixteen. That is your melanin. The carbon melanin adds up to two hundred and sixteen. This two hundred and sixteen letter name of God. Now let's go back to the marriage between the lamb and the bride. What is God? So the lamb is God is two hundred and sixteen. The bride, which is the nation of Israel, is one hundred and forty-four. How do we know that? When you go to the Crystal City, it talks about there are 12 gates. And there are 12 gates. Each gate has the tribe of Judah, the tribe of, of, of Israel, the 12 tribes. So the 12,000 from Naphtali, Joseph, Benjamin, Reuben, 12,000 from Simeon, Levi, Dan, Gad, Asher, etc., etc., etc. Naphtali, Joseph, Benjamin, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, right? Isaiah, Zebulun, Dan, Gad, Asher. They all had 12,000 tribes each. When you add that up, that is 144. So it said 144,000 is going to be raised. So the 144,000 is the 144,000 from the tribe of Judah. And then the lamb is 216. What is 216 at, at, at 144? 216 at 144 is 360, they're all. You cannot get any higher than 360. So what happened now? We fell away from God because we were fall, right? We fell away from God and now we're going to be resurrected because God is coming back for the chosen people. And that God is 216 and the chosen is 144. And when you put 216 to 144, you get 360 degrees, the highest you could get. 360 degrees is a circle having no beginning and no end. Something that has no beginning and no end is eternal. That is immortal. So that is the immutable cells of Henrietta Lacks, right? Immutable cells. You're not going to see this in any books. You're not going to see this in any books, which is the reason why I'm decoding it for you to see, because this was taught to me by my spirit guide. And by the way, when I talk about my spirit guide, my spirit guide ain't no male. It's a female. That I could tell you. And she has a particular name. And you have to call that name precisely in order for that guide to come to you, to give you that knowledge. But that's the next subject for another time. So what is this crystal city? It says, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thine kingdom come, thine will be done. We are on earth as it is in heaven. So the kingdom is coming from heaven and it's coming to earth. That the tree of life, where the flesh is coming from Keter, which is heaven, and it goes to Malkuth, which is earth, which is on the tree, the same tree was partaken. But what is the crystal city? Well, remember, when you go back to the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Dead Sea Scrolls, there is a book called the Books of Thomas. The Books of Thomas tells you that the kingdom is within you. As well as around you, the kingdom is within you. So your body is a temple. So your body is the kingdom, right? So this new Jerusalem coming is the new body, the crystal city, the crystal body. In your body, you have cells. That cells is tyrosine. The tyrosine molecules is a cube. That cube is six, six, six. Six times six times six equals 216. 216 is the 216 letters name of God. So it is in you what makes you God. Is it not written in your laws that you are gods? Right? Isn't that what Yahweh Shai said to the Jews? Is it not written in your laws that you are God? And then when we took of this fruit, right? God said, now the man has become one of us, God. So it's all based on you. The X-Men, their mutable genes, everything is all based on you. But you won't know if you blink because it's done so subtly that if you blink, you miss it. All right? If you blink, you miss it. But we're not here to miss everything. We're a decoder and we will decode everything, right? We will decode it, right? So now X-Men Apocalypse 2016. 2016. Why did they call it the Apocalypse? Apocalypse is the end of the world. Now, when you look at all these characters, and these films was based in Egypt, you have a film called Stargate. Stargate was Ra. Ra wanted to send a bomb back in time, right? Because the people went to time travel and came back to Egypt to try to kill Ra. Ra was going to send the bomb back to earth into the future to destroy the whole of mankind. Right? Ra is painted as the bad guy. Right? Black Adam is painted as the bad guy. What did Black Adam want to do? Black Adam wanted to destroy all this earth. When you go back to the X-Men Apocalypse 2016, you had the character Osiris. Osiris wanted to destroy all the earth. Where are they getting this from? But they see they made them look like they were bad guys. That's why in Black Adam, they showed a scene where everything was upside down. Because you got everything upside down, if you don't understand what's going on. Everything is upside down, you see. But where is all this coming from? You see, you have something called the Great Reset. Build back better. And what is all about? What are they going to do? They want to get rid of this world to build back a new world. Well, guess what? If you understand the Bible, you will know that the devil works for God because the devil is a necessary evil. Where they get it from? You got the whole CERN, the Hadro Collider, when they said it was going to create a black hole, when they fire protons at the speed of light. So one going one way to the left or one go to the other way to the right. And when they clash, the new element is created, what they'll create a black hole. And if you look in front of that, you see there's a statue of Shiva. What is Shiva? Shiva is coming from the Veda. The Vedic. What is the Vedic? In Star Wars, you have a character in there called Darth Vader. The word Darth means hidden, while Veda is the Indian script. That's why you have the Rag Veda. You have the, you know, you have the Upin Upanishad, the Rag Veda, the Mahabharata Harbor, right? And you have something called the Bhavagad Gita. Bhavagad Gita, right? These are the Vedic. What's hidden in there? Scientists know what's hidden in there. That's why all scientists from Nikola Tesla to Albert Einstein had to study the Vedic. That's why Hitler, Hitler studied the Vedic. They all studied the Vedic. What's in the Vedic? You have a character in there called Shiva. Shiva, that statue in front of the Hadro Collider is Shiva. Shiva does the cosmic dance. What is the cosmic dance? The cosmic dance is all the elements what makes up this universe. Shiva does the cosmic dance. But what does Shiva do? You see, in the Vedic, they have their trinity. You have Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. Brahma creates, Vishnu preserves, and Shiva destroys. So when they want to make a new creation, right? The new creation, because you have the Vedas, right? Because in there, you have the ages. You have four ages. 
the age of Kali Yuga, four ages. So in order to have a new earth, right, this old one has to be destroyed. So there has to be an apocalypse and then there's new kingdom coming, right? So that's why they had Shiva in front of the Hadjo Kalida. Because, you know, as Brahma, we create Vishnu preserve and Shiva is going to destroy to build a new earth. Where you think you're getting this idea of build back better from? Huh? The Great Reset. Now you understand the whole thing put together if you did it before. If you did it out before. x men Apocalypse 2016 Part 2 Sami Kundalini. Look out for Part 3. Aima tape. Old tape.